some of the 1,500 chemical drums at the site. Most of them have no labels. Many are leaking something, possibly explosive chemicals like cyanide, hydrochloric acid, or methylmercaptan that are known to be stored at Artel. Here he is. There's an unknown number of containers on that site uh, with an unknown quantity of unknown substances. <laughs> oh, we're all right, then. at least he's here to sort it out. <laughs> hey, but it really, a re I mean, a seriously bad scene going on down there. If it's only one drum of sodium that produces hydrogen, that causes an explosion, it's not just one drum now. You have a reaction that occurs sequentially. One drum goes, a flammable drum then blows up, and you have uh, Armageddon. <laughs> this, is, this is a factory. It's just there are tins lying around everyone. No one knows what's in the drums. There's all kind of chemicals going on. Look, at th these are the guys that they've sent in. Just, not to clean it up, just to have a look what's in there. These have just gone there to serve the summons. Look what they're wearing. You are aware <laughs> of various uh, odors in this particular area. Heavy soil contamination because of uh, spillage. There's a possibility of groundwater contamination under the site. So those are the avenues that we're talking about, and that's the fear that we have. Who could be responsible for letting a factory get to this state? Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the world's most likable man, Mr. Elmer Fike. <laughs> so if they can come in here and spend $10 million cleaning this site up, then that's $10 million progress they've made. You know, I, there are some problems here. I won't deny that. It's like I told a woman out there, we've got some drones in the field sitting out here that I've forgotten what's in them, but I can go out and sample them, and I can figure out what they are, and we, could do, we can take care of them. We've taken care of hundreds of drums and material, but... We probably don't keep it as current as the law would have us do it. Yeah, come on, what's the matter with you? <laughs> All right, there's a bit of battery acid lying around the back. I'll sort it out. Here, here's Elmer out with the team, all right? The team of the guys in all the, you know, space age, oh, apocalypse. Oh, oh, look at him. What's in him? Let's have a look. Yeah, that's dangerous. Yeah, that won't blow up. When you're as old as I am, as good a health as I am, then you can tell somebody what to do. But for, I'm not working for you. I'm not working for you. If you want me to go through here with you, I'll go through here with you. But I don't want you to tell me how to handle chemicals. Now, that's all there is to it. Okay, you do what you want to do, but I'm going to do what I want to do. Which is shake some flammable tanks. I'm oh, sorry, it's always given me pleasure and it always will. It's pretty hard to live by their rules. I'll live by my rules. I've been in a chemical plant for 50 years and I think I know what I'm doing. <laughs> yes, but what you're doing is blowing up half the planet. Yeah, but at least I know what I'm doing. <laughs> and anyway, listen, they're the stupid ones. They're the ones that are in danger. They're the ones who are putting their own lives at risk. Yeah. I suppose they want me to put a, a gas mask on and, and uh, rubber gloves and rubber suits, but I consider the hazard from heat stroke is far greater than the hazard of the chemicals. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't mind polluting half the world's rivers, but I'm damn sure I'm not going to get prickly heat and a headache. <laughs> Oh, anyway, here's the, they then went and the news crews came and they started talking to the local residents, right, who are lo lovely people, lovely people. Nitro resident Suzanne Tenkoff is starting to pack her bag. She's so afraid of what might happen. Mrs. Tenkoff, you say you are... Just incidentally, uh, that's a phrase that they use. It's an emotive phrase. They're starting to pack their bags. They're not. Obviously, what they're doing is getting a petition together, but, you know, that's just... It's a bit of journalese that you'll come across. And scale towards him. Oh, she's, she, has, she has actually packed us. <laughs> but she's a wonderful, warm, caring Christian person who just cares that everything, people, animals, and the planet is, is okay. Like extremely, extremely angry and hostile. We'd like to actually take Elmer Fike over to his plant and stake him there. <laughs> and meet him there. Actually, it's been suggested that we hard feather him and run him out on the rail. I, th I think that's a little extreme, but I would like to see him staked. <laughs> right. Uh, that, obviously, I think that's a little extreme, but don't, don't be fooled. That's not, they're not all against him. He has got some friends, all right? Sensible friends 
People who obviously have never been affected by any kind of chemical substance and they're happy to say that Elmer is a decent man. Mr. Elmer Fogg, he gave me a job and I appreciate it. <laughs> we, we really appreciate him. We still like him. Hang in there, Elmer. Ross, uh, this is a brand new game, really, uh, just for Wolf, because as you know, Wolf's uh, basically won't see 45 again. Uh, but he's very, very popular, especially with the young people, but uh, not as fit as he was. So well, the game that Wolf will be playing in future will be this. Wolf here, contestant, Daddy H, are you ready? Wolf, are you ready? By the whistle. And what Wolf will have to do is just basically come up, come up these stairs, and then, and then down this bit of string here. <laughs> and that's it. And if he learns that, we'll give him the 500 points. <laughs> Bless him. Yeah. Hi, well, welcome to the to my library. I'm just uh, browsing through a couple of my books. Very contentious book uh, going to come out now, and it's about the court case involving the sexual harassment of uh, uh, Princess Anne, Princess Royal. That's, uh, that's coming out soon. No, yeah, that one there. Horse trials. <laughs> and a very good book I've been reading uh, about marriage guidance in Stornoway and the Isles of Mull. That's, that's that book there. You see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now, I've got a couple of programs that I want you to look at. But will you look at this? I try and get this place as tidy as I can for when you guys come around. And my dopey cleaner has left the newspaper here. She is absolutely rubbish. No wonder Hunter slung her out, silly Scandinavian cow that she is. <laughs> come down here now. Oh, this is the newspaper, actually, that I was reading uh, earlier today. It's, uh, it's The Guardian, and it's a very nice piece here, My Cultural Life. And this one features... Uh, Eric Bristow, the former darts champion. Just telling you about the things that he likes, uh, films that he likes, books that he likes, uh, plays, pieces of theatre, and, and particularly television. And look at this here. There was then a program called Cops, where a camera crew follows a police unit hunting down criminals. It's very real and that appeals to me. I like truth. Truth is good. Truth is good. Then goes on to say, I wouldn't go to the opera if you paid me. Anyway, the opera house is closing down because they can't sell no tickets, so it must be shite. <laughs> so, kids, if you're out there, that's something to bear in mind. Truth is good. Opera is shite. <laughs> very simple, very simple little motto to live your life by. But Eric Bristow, big fan of it. And of course, I know a lot about those kind of programs myself. This program I want to show, though, is something I did many, many years ago. A program called London Bridge with my very, very dear friend, Mr. Michael Whale, who still does uh, sports broadcasts, I believe, uh, for, the other, for the other network. And it's a program that I'll show you because it shows changing attitudes, all right? A big problem now with the heroin culture amongst the models. They say, oh, they're too skinny. They're too skinny, the models. Let our children grow up naturally. Not quite the same in them days, obviously. There are right ways and wrong ways to slim. So with us on the program, we have Audrey Eiton, editor of Slimming Magazine, along with a group of girls who've been following the slimming course at school. Welcome, Audrey. Look very slim indeed. <laughs> Which is a compliment back then, obviously. Just before we go any further, these are the group of girls from the school. This is Audrey. I would guess this is Audrey's assistant, and looking, I would say, I don't know, uh, mid-twenties? Uh, it's always very contentious on about ladies' age, but mid-twenties, 25, 26, maybe 30. I don't know, but anyway, Audrey's views on, on slimming. Uh, I wondered about, the first thing really I wonder about slimming is the pressures put on young girls. I mean, is this a good thing, that they should slim? Yes, I think it is a good thing. Yes. They're too fat, get them skinny. <laughs> Simple as that in them days. Don't start getting progressive on me, Michael, talking about pressures. Just get them bitches on a diet. <laughs> uh, it did. That's how it used to work back then. It was all very different. At this moment, I should... Uh... Debbie Digby is over oh, here, who's uh, very nice as she is, in fact, I think. But you weren't always like this. Come sit close to me. <laughs> you weren't always as uh, slim as this, I gather, Debbie. No, um, when I was 14, mm. I weighed 10, nearly 11 stone. And I, oh. and I joined, you know, I sort of started slimming then. Mm. And I sort of lost the weight and then just started eating again and put all the weight back on again. Mm. How, so, how old do you know? I'm nearly 18. Mm. And you I don't look that. <laughs> More like 15, yes? Through slimming. More like 15? <laughs> well, it's got to be 40. <laughs> but that was the other thing that you think. She looks, she looks young, beautiful. Why? 
because she goes on a diet. Okay? Listening, fat kids? Huh? <laughs> I know, I grew up with these programs, mate, let me tell you. And, but if you were thin, if you just went on a diet, you'd be pretty, anything good could happen to you. Has it made life more enjoyable for you? Oh, yeah, I mean, you know, when I, I used to go abroad quite a lot, and I used to mm. see all these nice, slim girls in bikinis, mm. and I used to think to myself... Nice, slim men passing the <laughs> 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 and I And I used to think to myself, you know, if I could only look like that, you see, it's tragic, isn't it? <laughs> I wouldn't put that on today if I could only be skinny, please. Can I have some of that bulimia thing I keep reading about? <laughs> and look at her, she starts off as well. The other woman, right, who's like kind of witch finder general, look. <laughs> I've noticed Debbie's got a nice new engagement ring to show for oh. her too, so... Uh -huh. uh, well, ding dong, it. ding dong. <laughs> Things. Ding dong, ding dong, shut up. <laughs> Secondly, girls, it doesn't matter if you've got a few pounds, you still might one day get engaged. And thirdly, Michael, I think if you look carefully, you'll see that her face is up here. <laughs> <laughs> Program. Uh, I want to go back to, uh, to, uh, to the cops now. This is the thing that, bless him, Eric Bristow was talking about. And we're going to do... Uh, uh, again, when I was out with him, and I was travelling with, uh, with one of the, uh, one of the patrolmen, one of the detectives, and you know, there's a lot to police work that we don't understand. You know they talk about, oh, I had a hunch, I played a hunch. They do, they develop an instinct. You, you might see somebody and you think, well, I can't see anything there, but they're policemen, they've got years and years of experience, and they just know what's happening. The case in point, just fantastic. Almost, almost psychic ability. I think, are we about out? Have we got time for one more? Just one more. Just one more little example of one of these going out with the police shows uh, that I wanted to show you. And the, the, the reason I want to show you this is because we're very liberal in our language. We can, there's certain words we can say. All right, occasionally you'll hear the F word this time and out on television. You might hear the W word. You might hear the C word. Cameraman. That kind of <laughs> horrible, offensive thing. But in general, uh, we let these things go. Occasionally, people's language will be so bad that we have to bleep it. We don't like to do it, but it just happens. Uh, we're, off to, to, we're off to Stoke now. Oh, he's just threatened you then? Yeah. Right. Okay, so what's he actually said to you then? You're a... 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 Nothing. Yeah. You're a nobody. Who the... Be you. Right. And I don't want that. Okay. Do you want me to... I don't want that. <laughs> I think the cruelest thing we did to this man was the one word we didn't bleep was egghead. Because, <laughs> in fact, that's just a fact. Okay. But he doesn't want that, and I want to have a little chat with the cop and see if we can't sort something out. Whoever it is that's been abusing him. A word and advise him, then? No. I want, I want, I don't have him done. No. What for? Well, you're a policeman, can't you think of something? <laughs> Have a look behind his ear, he might have a joanne on, I don't know. <laughs> Just get him nicked for something, come on. I don't know. Because if I got him, I'd kick him. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, you wouldn't. Do you think you're best off just making your way home? I know you. exactly what you're saying. Yeah, you have had a drink. Yes, I, drink, I drink, can't you? I know. Okay. I'm walking. Right. The I'm thing is, live across the road and you here, there's much uh, more you likelihood of a confrontation, then, isn't and there? Then tell All him right. I shall speak to him and advise him accordingly, yeah. okay, that you're making a complaint about his behaviour. Yeah. What I'm going to advise you now is if you make your way home as well. No, All right. the best I can do. Well, that's what I'm telling you is what I'm going to do. You can't do it for manslaughter or anything like that. <laughs> there you go, so he sent him out. I just wanted to show you that. I don't know if there's anything on the end of this. We'll, we, we'll stick the end of it on. I think he then goes over to the side road and we see the bloke who it was that was abusing him. But I don't think there's any bleeping or anything there. I can't remember. So have a word with you gents, please. Yeah. Has there been some trouble in there? <laughs> there's a bloke who's indicated as you've been uh, threatening him across there. No, whoa, 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 whoa. I have not touched no. nobody. Right, okay, I just want to get your version of events as to what's gone on. It's the other way, don't it? Hello. <laughs> I did not do nothing wrong. <laughs> you need to be a father. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Aaron Bristow. A bag of chips on his way to the opera. <laughs>
Mr. Mills, you haven't been dumping toxic waste, have you? Dumping toxic waste? No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. And there's nothing that you would think would make me suspect that you had been dumping toxic waste? <laughs> I can't for the life of me think of anything, no. <laughs> uh, yes, um, look. Oh, we're 800 years old, look. <laughs> she only looks like 15, 16. <laughs> there you go, dear. 